In this video we're going to see the method of joints and this is one of the methods that is traditionally used in statics to analyze simple trusses. This method of joints, the main idea is to take each of the joints of the structure and do a free body diagram and write the equations of equilibrium of a particle. So the first thing I want to do is show you the, the main idea, the main concepts and then I, we're going to go straight into an example. So for the method of joints, the main idea is as follows. As I said, the goal is to use um, equilibrium of a particle and in this case the joints to find forces in elements, in structural elements, right? And in, in particular of simple trusses. Okay. Now the 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 procedure uh, and you know we have to take this with a grain of salt because the procedure might change depending on some particular um, um, cases but overall the process is generally right, right here is the following so we're gonna do first thing we need to do is to find our reaction forces And this is the part that might not be needed in all of the problems. There are some problems where the reaction forces are not needed. The second is we're gonna identify uh, joints with two unknowns. And then what we're gonna do is uh, draw Free body diagram of the joint, do our equations of equilibrium, for that joint, and then solve for those unknowns, right? And then what we're going to do is repeat two, three, and four as needed. So let me let me explain this. It's needed. There you go. So what happens is once we identify a joint that has two unknowns and we, we solve for those unknowns, then another joint in the problem might actually have two unknowns or less, right? So we can basically go joint by joint, finding the unknowns on all of the forces in the structure if that's what is needed. But overall, we're gonna try to follow this process in our problems. Again, the first step of finding the reaction forces is not needed in all of the problems, but if you're not sure whether or not you need it or not, my suggestion is go ahead and do it, why not? Okay, so let's look at an example. So in this particular example, we're gonna have is this truss. Let's see if I can draw it here. Just two meters. Let's start over here. Okay, I think this is how wide this is. I have joints over here. I have a joint over here over here so something like this and I'm gonna have another one here okay The 
see what supports that we have. So on the left hand side, we have a roller. The right hand side, we have a pin. And we have that um, a force that is five kilonewtons. This node, that's A. Five kilonewtons. This node, and that is B. Ten kilonewtons on top. That is C. Fifteen kilonewtons at D. And five kilonewtons at E. And we have this is F, G, and H. Now we have some distances, the horizontal distance between all of this is two meters. vertical distance between these nodes and these nodes is one meter and between D and C is also one meter okay so that's that's our problem right that's the thrust that we're trying to analyze and what the problem is asking us to do is to calculate the force in members CD and GD CD and GD. So that will be CD as this one and GD as this one. So we want to know what is the internal force in those elements and whether or not they are in tension or compression. So let me write down that problem statement. Okay, so calculate the forces. elements CD and GD okay so the first step is to find the reaction forces and this is where it might sound that we're gonna make too many diagrams but I strongly recommend you do all these diagrams because this is really going to uh, help you find the, the right solutions. So the first thing is I need to do the free body diagram of the whole structure, right? So do the diagram of structure. And so, so I really need to take the whole thing, redraw it, and then instead of having my supports, I need to put my support reaction forces with some axis, and that will be the free body diagram of my structure. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want to find the support reactions at A and at E. All right, so let's do that. Okay, so I'm gonna redraw this. I'll make sure I have the right color. All right, let's see. Draw my nodes, my elements go like this. Now I have a five kilonewton force here. Another five kilonewton force here. A ten kilonewton force here. Fifteen kilonewton force here. And five kilonewtons for here. Okay. 
do the rest of my drawing. Okay, I'm gonna put some distances. between each of these ones. Before I do that, I'm gonna have to write my, uh, draw my support reaction forces. I'm gonna do those in red since they're going to be not known at this stage. So this is gonna be my AY. Uh, in A, I only have one reaction force that is vertical because it is a roller. And at E, I'm gonna have two forces and EY and EX. That means that I need to identify what is X and Y for me. Put it here on the side. X and Y. There you go. And now I can just draw these two meters. Okay, so that's my free body diagram. Let's check. I only have my free body. I have my support reaction forces, all my external forces as well. I have all distances line up and I have my axis. So I think that's a complete free body diagram of my structure. All right, based on that free body diagram, now I can do equations of equilibrium to find my support reaction forces. So I'll give you that. All right, this is here on the next page. And what I have is um, um, what I have is if I go back here to this diagram, if I do, let's say, some of the moments about E, then these two forces will produce no moments about E, and I should be able to calculate, calculate my A, Y. So I'm gonna start there, some of the moments about E. And for that, um, we have uh, minus eight A, Y. Um, and that will be for my unknown force AY. And then for the applied forces on top of the truss, we have plus five uh, times eight, plus five times six, and those will be five times eight is this force over here, five times uh, six will be that force, and we have 10 times four. And then we have 15 times two. That will be for that force that is over here. Now that force, these five kilonewtons here on the right produce no moments because it is also, the line of action is going through E. All right, very good. Um, now, um, if we solve for this, uh, we can say that AY is going to give me 17.5 uh, kilonewtons, okay? You can just solve uh, for AY using that equation. That should give us 17.5 kilonewtons. Very good, so in this diagram, now I know what AY is. Uh, if I have EY as an unknown force, if I do some of the uh, forces in the y direction, I should be able to find EY. That's the next step that I'm going to do. So some of the forces in y, uh, that should be equal to zero, because we're in equilibrium. By the way, I forgot to put the equal to zero here. Okay, there you go. 
So we have 17.5 going up. Then we have minus 5, minus 10, minus 15, minus 5, minus 5, plus E, Y, right? And, and all that 5, 10, 15, and 5, they're all the forces that are going down on the structure. They're applied on top of the structure, but they're going down. That's what they're negative. And then at the end, we have E, Y. Solving for E, Y, we should get that this is... 22.5 kilonewtons. Very good. Last equation that I need to write is to find EX. And it's, um, I think it's going to be easy to see that EX is equal to zero because there is no there are no forces applied horizontally, right? So we do the sum of the forces in X that should be equal to zero. The only force is EX. So EX would be equal to zero. Very good. All right, that's my first step. My first step again was to find the uh, the support reaction forces. Now, what I need to do is I need to look at the diagram and look at which of those nodes have only two unknowns. And I started doing free body diagrams of each of those nodes and solving for the unknowns uh, uh, and then move to the next node and then move to the next node. Okay, so let's let's look at that. Let's see let's see how that's done. Alright, if I look back to this diagram, I have e AY, I also have EY and EX. And if I'm going to draw a free body diagram of, let's say, E, um, I can actually have two unknown forces. That's the force, the internal force in DE and the internal force on DF, right? So. I should be able to find those two forces because I can write two equations of equilibrium for a 2D problem involving a particle equilibrium. All right, so let's just start with the free body diagram of E. So uh, let me give you an example of where I should not start. I should not start, for example, at G because I don't know force at G, force DG, force CG, force BG, or force hg so i'll have one two three four five unknowns i cannot solve for five unknowns with a particle equilibrium in uh, in 2d right in this case i have two unknowns these two so i should be able to solve for for those okay very good so what i'm going to do is do the free body diagram of this particle particle e all right so free body diagram of E. Okay, so this is my particle E. And uh, uh, we know that on top of E, we have that five kilonewton force that is being applied. That's known force. EX gave us zero, so I'm not gonna draw it. And EY gave us 22.5 going up, so 22.5 kilonewtons going up. So those are the two things that I know. What what I don't know, the value of the force in DE and in EF. All right. So what I'm gonna do is just draw those two forces. By default, I'm going to draw them away from the node. We can draw them like this, or we can draw them towards the node. If we draw them away from the node, our assumption is that the forces are in tension, okay? So the assumption is that the forces are in tension. Let me write that down here on the side. So by default, draw unknown internal forces away from the node and that will be tension that will be tension okay all right let's label these two forces so this force is force EF I'm gonna call it this 
Elder was called Force DE. Okay. Uh, what else do I need? Well, I need my axis. So I'm gonna draw my X on my axis. I'm gonna do it here like this. Why not? X and Y. And I think that's a free body diagram of E. I have. Oh, I'm missing something. I'm missing some angles or something, right? Something that helps me with the orientation of, of this thing. All right, we can calculate this angle or we can actually deal with the ratio of the uh, horizontal and the vertical uh, distances. All right, so if we want to do this, um, using my calculator, I'm gonna try to use the uh, use the horizontal and vertical distances. Um, or we can use the angle. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's let's use the angle. Why not? Um, okay, so if we take this angle theta, right? And we can say um, that the tangent of theta, uh, it, and we could so based on this drawing over here, uh, is going to be um, one over two. So theta will be the inverse tangent of zero point five which is 26.56 degrees. Okay, so we got that angle. I think that is all we need. Very good. From this free body diagram, what I can do is do some of the forces in Y. I wanna do some of the forces in Y. Why? Because if I do some of the forces in X, I'm gonna have both unknown forces in that equation. Some of the forces in Y is only going to have the FDE. All right, so some of the forces in Y are going to be equal to zero. Uh, what forces do we have? What well, we have minus five plus twenty-two point five plus FDE sign of 26.56 okay so FDE we solve for that uh, will be equal to um, 5 minus 22.5 divided by the sine of 26.56, which is 0 0.4472. And FDE, I believe, to give me, to give me minus 39.13 kilonewtons. Okay, so look, we got a negative number which means that our original assumption on the type of internal forces was incorrect. What was our original assumption? Uh, the original assumption is that it was in tension. So what that really means is that force FDE is actually uh, in compression. So and instead of um, reporting this like this, the correct way to report it is say FDE, is 39.13 kilonewtons and we put a compression here or a C to indicate compression so don't report it just like this with a positive and negative you report the absolute value of the force or the magnitude of that force and you indicate whether or, whether or not the element is in tension or compression okay so if it's negative it's opposite to your assumption 
our or my default assumption is that everything is intentions and anything any negative numbers that I get then they're going to be in compression just like in this example all right I'm gonna continue so that's FDE um, I need to do now some of the forces in X okay and based on this diagram, the 5 and the 22.5 are in Y, so I won't have those in that equation. So I only have these two, right? Okay, so it will be FEF minus AVF, because it's going to the left, minus FD cosine of theta, right? We're looking for FEF, so FEF. is equal to minus FDE cosine of 26.56. And now look at this. I have not put the number yet because to continue with my calculations, I need to use this negative, okay? To be consistent with my three body diagram, I need to use this negative. So FEF is equal to minus minus 39. 0.13 cosine of 26.56. I believe I did this calculations correctly early. Uh, it is going to give me 35 kilometers. Okay, positive because that's negative and this negative and so on. So the way I report the answer, I report it as 35 kilonewtons in tension. So this is how I report FDE. This is how I report FEF. Very nice. So with the free body diagram of E, we were able to find FDE and FEF, right? So the next step is we go back to this original diagram. We now know the internal forces of this element. We know the internal forces of this element. But the problem is asking for the forces of what elements? Where is asking for GD and for CD. So we need to do one more one more jump. Okay. All right. Can I jump to D? Let's see. I know that force but I don't know CD, I don't know DG, I don't know DF. So that is too many unknown forces. I cannot jump straight to D, right? So what I need to do is look at F. And now just by looking at F, I'm starting to realize, wait a second, this DF is what is called a zero force member. Okay, zero force member. So let's, let's, let's look at why this is a zero force member. And, to do that, let's do the free body diagram of F. Okay, we did that. Need to do it in another page. All right, so free body diagram of F. Very good. So for F, the F, I have my force FE, right? force Fe, and we found that uh, Fe is 35 kilonewtons in tension. Okay, so that is not going to be unknown anymore, right? It's known. So I need to draw it in the right direction. So tension, tension will be going that direction. So that is 35 kilonewtons. Um, the forces that I do not know are the force FG, which are going in this direction, force FG. I'm drawing it in tension because I don't know what type of force I'm gonna get. And also force DF, force DF. I also draw it in tension because I don't know what type of force it is, tension or compression. So by looking at this free body diagram, the only way that this particle F is in equilibrium 
it is by making this FDF is equal to zero, right? And we can we could we could drive or write the equations of equilibrium. Some of the force in y equal to zero, that's the only force, right? FDF. So when I look at free uh, at trusses like this one, I can quickly identify that this element is a zero force member, it has no force. And there is another element that is easy to identify that is zero force member. Can you see it? Yeah, this one over here, the H, zero force member. If, you, if I do the free body diagram of H, I'm gonna see that the sum of the forces in Y uh, is gonna be equal to zero, but the only force in that direction is BH. So that's, that's going to be equal to zero. Okay, very good. So FDF equal to zero, it has no force. That's helpful, very helpful. Because if I go back here to this diagram and look at this DF, we know now DF so is equal to zero. We know DE, we find it in the calculations of, um, uh, of the joint at E, that's 39.13 kilonewtons in compression. By the way, I actually have done 39.1 for three significant figures. So the only two unknowns that I have left is this DG and this CD. Okay, so I can actually now do the free body diagram of T. All right, let's do that. Let's do the free body diagram of D. All right, this over here is going to be my D. And at D, I have a force of 15 kilonewton, a 15 kilonewton force applied to it externally to the structure. And I have and the force that I know, DE, okay, we found that DE was 39.13 in compression. Okay, important, we know that it's in compression. If it is in compression, we need to draw it in the right direction, okay? And the right direction is going to be that direction because it is in compression. So 39.13 kilonewtons. Um, we know that this angle over here that theta that we found before and uh, the element df has zero force so i'm not going to draw it that's all the information i know the forces that i do not know are force cd i'm going to draw it in tension it's my default so i don't know it force cd and also force dg What else do we know? Well, we know the angles. This is theta. This is also theta. We also need some axis. We'll put it here on the side. X and Y. And I think that's my whole free body diagram for D. My particle, forces acting on it, angles, axis. That looks good. All right, very good. So when I look at this free body diagram of D, uh, I can start trying to find some equations of equilibrium that are going to help me. Okay, let's see. Um, well, let's just start, I, I cannot really um, decouple one from the other ones, although I could actually rotate my axis and that will help, but I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do that uh, right now. I can rotate my axis so that such that this is the x and then the y is in this direction. And then with that, I can find FDG much easier, actually. I'm going to put my axis that way. I'm just going to leave it that way. So for the sum of the forces in y, what do we get? We have minus 15. We have plus... 39.13 times the sine of theta. We have plus FCD sine of theta 
minus F D G sine of theta. Okay, I have two equations or two unknowns in one equation. Uh, I cannot solve that with only one equation. Okay, so I need to write another equation. So let's do some of the forces in X. Okay, so some of the forces in X are equal to zero. So what we wanna see is, um, okay, so I have, all of them are gonna be negative because the way they're drawn, that's okay. So minus 39.13 sine theta minus FCD sine theta minus FDG cosine of theta. Okay, very good. I had the same two unknowns, so now I have two equations to unknown. So I should be able to find one uh, with the other one, one with the other one. Let's see, so let's take this first equation, some of the forces in Y, and let's try to find, let's say, FDG. How about that? Um, which we should take, maybe the force signs over. Yeah, now let's take the, some of the forces in X and let's try to find FCD. Okay, so I'm put over here using some of the forces in X is equal to zero. We can see that FCD is going to be equal to um, minus 39.13 uh, cosine of theta over cosine of theta um, minus FDG cosine of theta over my cosine of theta. So FCD is going to be equal to minus 39.13 minus FDG. Okay, very good. Now I can put this equation, this FCD, on this equation over here with some of the, some, some of the forces in Y. Uh, and then using some of the forces in Y are equal to zero. For that particular equation, we have minus 15 plus 39.13 sine of theta plus FCD, but FCD, we know that this is minus 39.13 minus FDG sine of theta minus FDG sine theta equal to zero. Okay, now everything is in terms of FDG, so I should be able to find that FDG and F D G um, should give me. I'm gonna I'm gonna skip a couple of steps in here, but it's only solving for F D G from this equation. F D G should give me um, minus uh, sixteen point seven seven. Kilonewtons. Okay, negative again. That means that my reporting should be equal that this is 16.8 kilonewtons in compression. Okay. Finally, I can take this FDG, put it back in this equation over here that we have SCD as a function of FDG. And we should be able to find that FCD will be equal to uh, 
minus 22.36 kilonewtons or FCD reported 22.4 kilonewtons in compression. Why compression? Because it gives me negative. My assumption when I drew my free body diagram is that it was in tension. So this will be my final answers, these two.